Hey everyone, Wallace from School Rubric here, and we're pleased to have with us today Dr. Dyron Ford, who's the assistant principal at Woodside High School in Newport News, Virginia. Dr. Ford also serves as an adjunct faculty professor at Thomas Nelson Community College. Dr. Ford also serves as the program coordinator for the Newport News Public Schools Rise Male Empowerment Network. Dr. Ford, thank you so much for being with us today. All right, thank you so much, Wallace. Super excited about being here today. Let's get right into it. The school year is over, but let's do a little reflection at the end of the school year. What kind of challenges did your community face? What were some of the successes as a result of your school's response? Well, you know, as I reflect back on the school year, one phrase sums it up, and that is what an experience. So as I think about the challenges we faced uh, at Woodside uh, in particular, one, of course, had to deal with equity. We just really wanted to make sure and really work very hard um, to ensure that the, we tried to level the playing field as much as possible, uh, particularly with access to technology. That was huge. Second um, was just really being a support for our families in terms of uh, if the students needed something. And the biggest thing is working very hard to ensure that um, students had families had access to, to food. Uh, and that was a huge thing. So as I think through those challenges, I think when, as I think about these successes, um, two things kind of stand out. One, the synergy of our staff and our administrative team. We were really like, we took upon the mantra, we're all in this together. And I think the biggest thing is that we were able to celebrate in the midst of the pandemic, uh, whether it was holding drive-through luncheons for our teachers, virtual spirit weeks. Uh, we spent a lot of time planning our senior week for our, our seniors, which was a huge drive-through, really fun celebration for the seniors and that was just that was that's what we needed as a school community it really was great um and you know i would never forget it awesome that's great that's great to hear and it's so good to hear about the community coming together and some of those success stories now let's talk a little bit about summer vacation and this upcoming school year there is a ton of uncertainty out out there about what the new school year is going to look like school class might be virtual class might be in person it might even be a hybrid model and we have a lot of students and educators who are in emotionally fragile states. We have some students who might also be in some academically fragile states. What are some of your tips that you can share with teachers as they start gearing up for the next school year? Well, I have three, three tips for teachers. The first thing is breathe. <laughs> it's okay, enjoy the summer. That's the most important thing. We hear a lot about uh, self-care, so important that you make time for yourself and your family first and foremost. Number two, I think seek um, professional development opportunities within your district. I know in Newport News, we have a very comprehensive summer PD plan with lots of great offerings, particularly the ones that deal with um, virtual uh, instruction, uh, synchronous and asynchronous, we hit, we're hearing that a lot, but really delve into that in order to uh, add to your tool bag and even gain some additional skills. Um, I think as well, I think this is the most important thing as well, is be prepared to be flexible. I think that's so important because so uncertain. So you have to be flexible and you really, really have to look at kind of shifting the paradigm because it's going to be very different. Um, so those are the three things I would, I would share, I have shared with educators um, as okay. we kind of get ready for the upcoming school. And it's great that you're telling teachers to take a break and take a step back and breathe. Yeah. But I know as an administrator, sometimes that's a little difficult. As administrators, while everyone's breathing, you're planning. You're thinking about that new school year. You're thinking about what that looks like. So can you tell us and share with us and give us a little insight? What are those discussions looking like at the leadership level as an administration about next school year? Well, one of the, one of the, the huge conversations we're having and everyone's having is around, this, um, around equity. Um, we're really spending some time this summer looking at our school community and really kind of outlining what are the barriers to achievement at our school. And we have to have an open and honest conversation, which can be hard, but we're looking at things like, hey, let's look at our, our school climate, our, our learning environment, uh, our discipline practices, um, school programs. And we have programs in place where all students have an opportunity to be successful. And we're really looking at those things and, and working hard to, to outline a plan for that. And as well as we look at our data and even our school improvement plan, one thing in particular is looking at professional development for our teachers. 
because as they come back, things will be different. And we really have to sit down and assess what are the things our teachers need? It has, do they need more PD on building relations with students? Do they need, of course, further PD on technology, uh, equity? Like we really have to sit down and, and have and be very intentional about planning our PD, uh, which, is, which will be a huge part as we look at putting our uh, professional development plan, um, our school improvement plan together. Um, and even as well, just hiring teachers, making sure that we hire teachers that fit our school community, that's gonna be huge. Um, so those are some of the conversations we're having um, as an as an administrative team. Okay, thanks for sharing that. You know, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about a topic that might be a little bit sensitive, but there's a lot of things that are happening in the United States and in the world with respect to racial tensions, police brutality. I'd like to get your thoughts on what that means to you personally, how you're processing it, and what your reaction to that is. Well, from a, a personal standpoint. Um, you know, um, as an African American male or man, I, I've experienced situations um, that have been, you know, touch and go. Whether it's, it's dealing with law enforcement, who I have a huge respect for, um, and even just day to day life. Um, but even with that, from a from a processing standpoint, I process it, all of this through my son, because he's a young guy. He just graduated from high school, and my conversations with him is, "Hey, guy, hey." You're, you're a good looking guy, you, you, you're, you're going to college, you have everything you need, you know, it's at your fingertips. However, we have to have those conversations. I have to have those conversations with him to ensure that, you know, he's prepared to face the world because it's, it's very different. Um, so um, that's my commitment um, to my son, as well as making a commitment to the students that I work with every day and ensuring that we have a, a school climate and culture where kids have a voice, where they feel, of value, they feel respected, and that's my job to ensure that that our school is doing that, and we're, we're doing a pretty good job with that. Right, and maybe you can elaborate on that a little bit more. It's really great that you shared your personal experience and the fact that you have a son and you're able to have really constructive conversations with him as a father. Talk a little bit about what your thoughts are for students as they come back to school and even teachers that may want to engage or have questions about this particular issue and aren't really sure how to talk about it in classrooms, aren't really sure if they should be talking in the classrooms. What are, what's some of your thinking as a school administrator on thoughts to proactively, constructively engage students and teachers in this type of conversation uh, during such a sensitive time? Well, well, one thing I think is important, um, and I'm doing, a little, doing some work on this this summer, um, one, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge um, believer in student voice. So one thing I would offer to teachers, and I'll be happy to share this with anyone, uh, put together a summer reading program for boys in particular. Uh, and through that kind of um, constructive uh, curriculum, uh, we, we've, had, uh, we've had three sessions so far. Our first session, we read and analyzed a poem by Lacey Hughes called I Too Sing America. So that allowed the students to read some literature and then share their viewpoints on, hey, what does America mean to you? What is America not doing for you? And allowing the kids to have a voice through, you know, through this amazing text and feel comfortable in having that conversation. Um, so I would, I would stress to teachers that a lot of these conversations can be, can be held through our curriculum and, and, and looking at, uh, uh, best practices and material that young people can connect to. And of course, the, the framework is there and allowing them to express themselves and creating that safe environment. So that would be my, um, my number one thing. And, and even with doing the summer reading program, we've picked some pieces that we feel like the, the guys in particular will really get into. Our next session, we're reading a chapter, excerpt from a chapter of Autobiography of Malcolm X where he talks about his teacher not um, believing that he could be a lawyer <laughs> and you know, had some thoughts around that and how he was able to just push through. So we're hoping that the young men would be able to connect to that piece and share their experiences and then offer them advice as men. Um, so again, using that curriculum to make that happen. I think that's the, the number one thing um, from my perspective. Thanks for sharing that. That's really, that's really powerful and it's great that you're using 
um, literature and text to, to, to approach it from that angle. Dr. Ford, uh, we know that we have the pleasure of having you present at one of our upcoming professional development conferences on August the 29th. Um, it'd be great if we could end this conversation by having you give us a little bit of a preview on what the presentation's about and why educators ought to think about attending. Well, first thing, it's gonna be great. <laughs> it's gonna be great. But, but my, my lens on, on this presentation, um, which I've entitled Saving Our Boys, um, in the 25 years that I've been an educator, I've had the opportunity to work with, with males, whether it was in the classroom, coaching, as an administrator, just in the neighborhood, and I've worked with a lot of great young men over the course of time. But one thing that I do know is that as we look at the current research on our young men, they face several challenges um, and several outcomes that lead to just various situations, um, and oftentimes it's not positive. But what I offer to teachers or anyone that attends our session, I'm so excited, is this three pathways to saving our boys. And I use the word save in the, in the context of preserving, um, cherishing, um, uh, embracing young men. Um, so I'm just gonna give a, a short preview, but just three um, critical steps. One of which, which I wholeheartedly believe in is relationships. Relationships are the key. Uh, as I think about the summer reading program, we cannot have 40 boys, I mean, on Zoom at one o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesdays, if not for relationships. I mean, they're on there and they're so engaged. So that's just relationships that um, we're able to connect with them and they're, and they're willing to make a commitment to, to, to you know, giving, getting out of bed and being on at one o'clock in the afternoon. So relationships are one thing I definitely would wish to be there. So I'm so excited to have the opportunity to share um, just some, some practical strategies, of course, research-based support. Looking forward to it. Great. Dr. Ford, thank you so much for being with us today. From all of your work with closing out the school year, planning for the new school year, what you're doing with your summer reading club and the reading program, to working with educators and helping them tackle and work through such sensitive and difficult issues, we really appreciate you taking some time and speaking with us today. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you.